This video covers the fundamentals of SVG. The structure of this video is as follows. What SVG is, what HTML5 Canvas is, SVG versus Canvas, the structure of SVG within an HTML document, the syntax of basic SVG objects, the summary. All right, let's get started. What SVG is. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. SVG is a family of specifications for creating vector graphics. Vector graphics are not created out of pixels. Drawing vectors is called vector-based graphics. Since vector graphics are not created out of pixels, they can be scaled up to larger or smaller sizes without losing image quality. SVG images and their behaviors are defined in XML text files. Since the DOM includes XML as part of the DOM specification, we can use the DOM tree to access and update the structure, content, and style of SVG images. This means that SVG elements can be styled using CSS just like HTML. What HTML5 Canvas is the HTML5 Canvas specification is a versatile JavaScript API or application program interface, allowing us to code programmatic drawing operations. Canvas by itself allows you to define a Canvas context object which can then be drawn inside. This drawing object is created as a Canvas tag element on the HTML page. Within this context, you can use the simple, powerful API to perform quick drawing operations on a 2D bitmap surface. The drawing consists of pixels on a surface. Drawing pixels is called raster-based graphics. Also, no DOM nodes are created for any graphical element. SVG versus HTML5 Canvas. SVG is a vector-based graphic system which creates DOM objects for each graphical element. HTML5 Canvas is a raster-based graphic system which creates images based on JavaScript API interactions. The similarities are that both allow for drawing graphics and both allow for drawing in 2D. The big differences between the two is one is vector and one is raster. The second big difference is that SVG has DOM elements which allow you to style and attach events to. There are other differences that are very important. D3 uses SVG, so we will explore SVG further. The structure of SVG within an HTML document. SVG graphics are defined within an HTML document just as if you were writing HTML. You start with an opening SVG tag you close with a closing SVG tag. Inside you can specify basic shapes like rectangle, circle, ellipse, straight line, polyline, and polygon, or specify an SVG path. The SVG path allows you to create all the basic shapes and many other ones. The SVG path represents the outline of a shape that can be stroked, filled, used as a clipping path, or any combination of all three. SVG path is basically a pen you can move around. The syntax of basic SVG objects. We are going to continue using our initial .html file. Now we are going to type the basic SVG shapes. First, we will do a rectangle. So you can see we have the SVG opening tag and we put a width and height to the tag. For the rectangle, we use the rectangle keyword and define the X and Y starting points, and then the width and the height of the rectangle. Once this is defined, we close the SVG tag. We add some line breaks in order to space out the web page. This time we are going to create a circle. Start with the same SVG tag. This tells the browser that we are going to have an SVG image that is 50 units wide by 50 units tall. As you can see in the circle, we specify the center point, so CX and CY, and then we specify a radius. SVG takes care of the rest and is able to draw the circle for us. Next, we draw an ellipse. Again, we tell the document that we are going to have an SVG element that's 50 units wide by 50 units tall. 
for the ellipse, we also put a center point, the CX and CY, and then we put a radius for the X axis and a radius for the Y axis. As you can imagine, if you put the RX and RY to be equal, you will get a circle. Next, we create a straight line. For the line, there are two endpoints that we need to define. The first one, which is x1 and y1, and the second one, which is x2 and y2. For a line, we have to give it a color as well as a width. In this case, the color is gray and the width is 5. Next, we write the SVG for a polyline. A polyline is different than a straight line in that for the polyline we define many points rather than the straight line where we define two points. Again, for a polyline like the straight line, we have to color it and give it a stroke width. We start with the point 0, 05, 30. The next point is 15, 30. Following point is 15, 20. The following point is 25, 20. Then comes 25, 10. And lastly, we have 35, 10. It's worth noting that if you're going to write all of these points on one line, the space separation works. In this case, the way we wrote it, the return separation works. Lastly, we are going to build a polygon. A polygon shape is very much like the polyline, except the very first point defined will be connected to the very last point defined, and the interior of the section enclosed will be filled. So here we are going to fill the inside section with yellow and the outside line is going to be colored blue. Like before we define our points, we are going to make a triangle so we use three points. All right, so that is the end of the HTML code, SVG code that we are going to write. Let's save the file and see what it looks like in the browser. We open the local file and drag it into our browser. As you can see, we have all our SVG elements spaced out. And at the bottom, we have the initial HTML that we had written before. Let's take a look at the code and what appears in the browser. As you can see, the rectangle is black. This is because we did not specify a fill color. Same with the circle and ellipse. For the straight line, we use the color gray. And for the polyline, we use blue. And for the polygon, we use the stroke of blue and then a fill of yellow. And that is the syntax of basic SVG objects. The summary. This video covered what SVG is, what HTML5 Canvas is, SVG versus Canvas, the structure of SVG within an HTML document, the syntax of basic SVG objects, and the summary.